Seaweed and Desert Berry? Hmm, that sounds like a smoothie. Perfect. Hello there, bro skis. Erkin back here. But if you're new to the channel, this is the life of a broski where I do sneaker unboxings and reviews just like this one. So if that's your cup of tea, hit that subscribe button. But before we get into this video, I just want to give a big shout out to the Show Your Crep family, aka the Crep Conglomerate, because I have joined this amazing team of sneaker heads. Now they do a lot of sneaker shows on YouTube and on Instagram, and I've actually appeared on their show before and I'm so proud of the boys from where they first started to where they are today. So make sure you hit them up on Instagram, give them a follow because I will be appearing on some of the shows very soon. And a little shameless plug broskies, if you're interested in getting a trusted shoe cleaner, we have partnered up with the Pink Miracle and you actually get 15% off with our code SHOWCREP. I will leave all the links and stuff down below. And as soon as I get my hands on it, when I meet up with the boys, I'm gonna be reviewing the shoe cleaner. But now that's out of the way, the sneaker that I'm reviewing today broskies is... The Nike Air Max 270 Vista Skate. Okay, we have got your OG red Nike box. Nothing spectacular there, but on the product information, it reads Air Max Vista Scape, and the official colorway is Seaweed and Desert Berry. Seaweed and Desert Berry, hmm, that sounds like a smoothie. Now this sneaker is not gonna be for everyone and granted it is designed primarily as a hiking sneaker. But if you're one of those people that love a good old trek up a mountain or even for people that live in pretty harsh conditions, this might be the one for you. Now a little disclaimer, this is not a performance review. This is just my initial review to the sneaker and whether I can recommend them as a lifestyle sneaker or not. Now these haven't been out a month yet and these actually are retailing at 150 pounds here in the UK and if you are looking to cop a pair of broskis I will leave some links down below so you can check out the latest prices and sizes. Now there were a couple more colorways that came out on release. There was that all black stealthy colorway and there was also that light Oreo wood brown colorway which for me looks the best out of the bunch and at the time when I was trying to order them I could only get my 9 UK in this color so like a dead fish I just went with the flow. Now Nike are claiming this is very much a 90s inspired look to its design and details. Now their aim is to create a sneaker that is both designed for the streets and if you wanted to take a short detour to the park climbing around in these would be your best bet. You can very much see that from the outsole straight away and Nike are calling this the storm tread sole that includes the multi-surface traction panels. Now if you look closely on the details of this outsole it is very much all over the place and for me in my opinion that's just a metaphor for how Nike have approached this sneaker. Now I'm actually a fan of the outsole I think it brings something new and refreshing to the table but that upper Mm, I'm not so sure. Now this upper, like I've said, it does have that 90s vibe to it. And on the underlays where you see the purple panels, it has that nylon feel. And I'm guessing the inclusion of that material is to repel water as much as possible. Now going to the toe box, just in front where the toe guard is, there is that synthetic leather panel. And there is that strip that leads onto the lacing on the overlays. And a couple of these panels on this sneaker, such as the toe guard and on the mid panels, just just above the midsole, there are those slits that act as perforation holes. So of course Nike have taken into account that you're most likely going to be sweating buckets in this sneaker. Now leading up to the lace feeds, as you can see attached to the midsole, in what replaces a normal lacing setup is this utility string like feature. And in all honesty broskies, this doesn't really look good to me. Yes you can attach it to that string because it has the hook on the end, but when trying these on and 
needed them a little bit more tighter. And by doing that, there wasn't a place to actually attach to. So it just left that string flapping about. And if I'm wearing these out in public, that's not really the look I wanna go for. I guess you could get rid of this string design and whack in your own laces. And I pretty much think that would fix the problem. Now we've got that utility look to all these straps going across the upper. We've got a mixed color blocking all over this sneaker that ranges from that teal blue, purple, pink, black, and of course grey. Now the tongue is covered in that mesh material inside and out and I've got to say this tongue is one of the most comfortable and padded tongues I've ever felt. And it's a good thing too because this tongue is so big that it covers most of the upper of your foot. Now inside we've got that mesh material again that just adds to that comfort and breathability. Now towards the back panels on the medial and lateral side we've got those sort of straps that you can adjust but for me they're more to look at rather than making a difference because whether you loosen them or tighten them it doesn't really matter and that's a bit of a shame if those buckles actually did their job properly i wouldn't really have to worry about that string dangling in the front now going to this heel counter for me it's got those harachi vibes to it but we've got that tpu cage and that's responsible for giving it much more structure towards the back now going to this midsole we have of course that react cushioning and broski's a bit of disappointment Appointment, this isn't your average react foam because of the type of sneaker it's designed a little bit more rugged so to our disappointment you don't get that normal soft foam feel to this react midsole there is a slight soft feel to the gray part of this midsole but it's the rubber traction panels in black that makes this sneaker a little less comfortable on foot and that's obviously to add a bit more durability and ruggedness and of course more traction and it's pretty ideal if you think about it if you're climbing all over stones rocks sticks and all other sharper objects this will have your back even better when it comes to the protection now to finish off this midsole of course we've got that 270 air unit towards the back and i feel this is what salvages the comfort there's not really much changes in terms of the feel on foot when it comes to that air unit at the back so there you go broskies the first look at this air max 270 vista scape and what's your initial thoughts are you a fan or not or are you like me and you just need to warm up to this a little more now when it comes to the sizing of this sneaker it is very much true to size it does remind me of the new 270 react engs just in terms of how they feel so i would say stick to your normal sizing now like i've mentioned when it comes to the comfort i can see why nike have sacrificed certain elements just to give it that slight edge when it comes to how durable they are and also providing protection being designed for mainly hiking and outdoor activities but nike have also added some lifestyle elements too but overall for comfort out of 10 i am gonna give a seven and a half the back is definitely more comfortable than the front and that 270 air unit just does this sneaker justice now i've spoken a little bit about those slits for the perforation holes but does it really help this sneaker when it comes to the ventilation now my initial thoughts when i first pulled these out of the box i was actually thinking oh hold on these might be a bit too warm for outdoor activities just because of those synthetic leather panels it just made me doubt these a little bit but overall for breathability not really much to complain about for what the sneakers designed for you will have no troubles out of 10 i'm gonna give an eight now can i recommend you to people i've got people that are counting on me you know they're coming to me to see if they're gonna buy a sneaker or not so i have to be honest i have to now we've come to the part of the video broskies where I decide if these sneakers are a buy or a buy. Now, if I'm being totally honest with you, broskies, these Vista Scapes really had to grow on me from when I first tried them on. Some of the things I didn't really like was, of course, that string setup to the lacing system. From how tight I want them, that dangly look to the string just puts me off. But you can always change the laces if you really want to. So I guess considering it's not really that deep, but comparing it to all the pros that I do like about this silhouette, that rugged look to this sneaker, you know it's gonna help you along the way if you're going on a long trek or doing some outdoor activities but is it worth that 150 pounds broskies the way this year has gone i can see these going on sale very quickly so maybe just wait out for that i think if these were about 120 pounds i 
can defo recommend these. But for what it's designed for, if you really need a hiking sneaker or an outdoor activity one, I'm gonna give my approval and give these a buy. But broskies, let me know what you think. Would you go for these if you were going hiking or doing some sort of outdoor activities? Or do you already have a tried and trusted sneaker for that? Leave all your comments down below and I will be pinning the best one. Anyways, broskies, before I leave you, always keep an eye on my community tab on my YouTube page because I'm always posting sales and discounts. So if you're like me and you love a bargain, just keep an eye out. Anyways, broskies, that's enough waffle from me. As always, don't forget to subscribe like comment share and of course until the next episode take care